Sis, if you're relocating or thinking of relocating, you know there are so many things to consider. From the location to the cost to opportunities and everything in between, you want to make sure you're on point. So why would you try to figure it out on your own when you can glean from other people and their experiences? Well, look no further. My sis, Alicia, over our Millennial Thoughts podcast has been doing a relocation series, and she's interviewed several of us. Most recently, she interviewed me about my experience of moving from the DMV to Atlanta. And when I tell you there are so many things I've learned along the way, you don't want to miss it. So go over to Millennial Thoughts Podcast. Make sure you listen to the episode and also subscribe, like, and share it because other people can use the wisdom. See you there. What's up, sisters? Welcome back to another episode of For My Sisters with Dell Podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. As you can see, we need a reset. Sis, it is halfway through the year, just about, and it is time for us to reset the room. However, before we get into resetting the room, you already know, I got to let you know about all the goodies. So don't forget to check the description box down below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on your podcast platform of choice, check the show notes because all the goodies are there. However, I have to shout out one of our sponsors, Coaching with Miss Jessie. Make sure that you check her out. She helps women build unstoppable confidence while healing through traumas, get inner soul healing because the ish matters, and discover their purpose. She is a faith-based business and therefore everything starts with God and ends with God. She is a certified life coach and right now, currently, as you're listening to this podcast, she's offering free life coaching sessions. Y'all, they ain't just handing out life life coaching sessions now. So make sure that you sign up for that. Check her out on Facebook, Coaching with Miss Jessie. You can type it in the search bar. You'll find her. You could also go to coachingwithmissjessie.com and you'll find her there and on Instagram at Coaching with Miss Jessie. So on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Coaching with Miss Jessie, go to coachingwithmissjessie.com and send her an email or a DM and she'll let you know how to get on her calendar for a free life coaching session. Also make sure that you tap in, tap in sis. If you are a single Christian woman, doesn't matter where you're located. If you are not engaged and married and you're a Christian woman and you're like, listen, I'm ready to be outside. I'm ready to hang out with my sisters. I'm ready to, you know, do some self-development, just live my best single life right now then you need to tap into my organization, Single and Save in the City. Um, I'm looking for women who are ready to be outside, who are ready to fellowship. Like I said, this is a community where we support each other. We do events and experiences. I'm actually in the midst of working with the resort and the travel agency for the Kingdom Girls Getaway next May. All right. So that's a tra- an annual trip where we travel and all that luxury VIP experience. So tap in. Just go to singleandsavedinthecity.com. You'll be able to find us on Instagram at Single Saved in the City. And of course, on Facebook at Single Saved in the City. And last but not least, if you're not subscribed, if you're you're still, you know, visiting and dropping in and dropping out and not really subscribe to the podcast. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe or follow on your platform of choice. And if you're on YouTube, of course, you already know, subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and talk about resetting the room. Listen, like I said, we are halfway through the year and I don't know about y'all, but May was a whirlwind for me between Mother's Day, the meetup that I had for Single and Saved, uh, Memorial Day weekend, your girl was outside for real. Okay. I don't know if you can hear the congestion in my voice, but I'm going to try to make it through this without coughing or having to, you know, like severely clear my throat or anything like that. So this might be a shorter episode just because the, this little bit of congestion is not trying to leave. So nevertheless, May was a lot going on and I entered June and I was like, I need a reset. Like I need to recharge. I need to just rejuvenate. I need to woosah. Like I need to just get some structure and kind of get back to being in the cut. Cause you know, sometimes we'd be like, I want to be outside. I want to mingle. And it's so crazy. Cause the last episode I was talking about loneliness and how we need to mingle more and stuff. And I did that. And now I'm like, okay, I need a moment, you know? So it kind of goes back to what I was saying in the last episode. Like sometimes we purposefully isolate ourselves just so that we can get a breather. That's kind of where I was. I was like, June, I really need to hunker down. Cause there's some things that I need to do. And you know, since it's halfway through the year, it's a good uh, time for us to sit and just think about like, what is my year looking like? Is my year really giving what I needed to give? Am I even on course? of what I said I wanted to do when the year started, all of those things. So I really want to just talk about what resetting, like the benefits of it and, you know, just kind of have like a sisterly pep talk and be like, come on, sis, let's get it together. So why do we, or why should we think about these things at this point, as far as resetting the room? For one, it's important to just get a moment to think about like, you know, what, what, what is going on in my life, you know, to really stop and smell the flowers and to really stop and think about the bigger picture. 
what is happening right now? <laughs> and and do I feel like I have control? Like ultimately, yes, we trust God and God is in control. But do I feel like I have a hand on things or am I kind of just like ripping and running and going through the motions? Like, and I don't know about y'all, but I struggle with anxiety and depressive episodes, like I've said, and I'll share, you know, some more of my testimony and my story times about that and just give tips about like how you can better walk through those seasons and how, and how people, you know, around you can encourage you and stuff. But for me, when I get in that tizzy and I'm like, okay, I, I feel like I'm losing control. I feel like everything is just is just going haywire. My anxiety starts to increase. And I'm pretty type B, so I'm not super regimented. I know that shocks some people because they're like, oh my gosh, like you do so much. I'm very free flow. I'm very free flow. Like even when it comes down to my content, when it comes down to like me doing stuff outside of the meetups and things that involve like gathering groups of people, I'm very free flow. I might literally come up with a podcast episode the morning I'm going to tape and then boom, I just, I get the notes, everything. It just hits me all at once. And a lot of the time too, I'm kind of flowing off the dome. So, you know, that's just how I am. But I still have a breaking point. I still have a point where it's like, okay, I'm free flow, but I need an anchor. I need to, I need to know what are we doing? What's the goal? What's the plan? Like, what's the agenda? You know, what is all this for? So, you know, I think it's important for us to, um, and it's um, resetting the room matters so that we have that opportunity to really just get anchored again and to better manage your mental health and your expectations. Cause again, like I said, if you're like me and you struggle with anxiety or depression or just anything like that, um, within that realm and that space, it really works in your benefit to be a little bit more anchored to just kind of recalibrate and, you know, reassess things. And just, again, just stop and smell the flowers and, and check up on things and see how things are going. And also to manage your expectations, because sometimes when the year starts, not that you don't want to have big faith, you know, cause God can do the impossible. So I'm not saying don't dream big, don't hope big, don't faith big, none of that. But sometimes if we're keeping it a buck, we're doing a little bit too much. Like, we're doing too much, you know? <laughs> so it's like, we still got to be realistic in some ways. And sometimes we bite off more than we could chew because we forget that we're human. Like, yes, we're relying on God, but we are still human and, you know, our humanity and our flaws and our shortcomings. And so there are certain things that just realistically speaking, we cannot set that goal and say like, I'm going to do this in this time frame. Like if that comes to pass, that is truly a God did it type of story. And won't he do it? Won't he will, you know, like, so it just, it gives us a chance to kind of manage all of those things better. So that way we're not all in a tizzy. So how, what are some things you should be thinking about and how should you go about that to reset the room? So things to think about that I would suggest at this point where are you with your goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year? Again, like I said, when the year starts, it's just something about December into January. We're nostalgic. We're sitting down. We're flushing out all the goals. We're like, yeah, like I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get that done. This is going to be my year. This is my year every year. <laughs> every year. This is my year. This is my year. This is my year. If it wasn't my year last year, I'm speaking it and I'm claiming it this year. But you know, life happens, you know, January gets going and I don't know about y'all, but January for me, is kind of a eh month. Now financially is good. Surprisingly, Uber Eats in Atlanta does really good in January. And surprisingly, even like with my boutique and, you know, like my uh, service based stuff, January is a good month for me. I can't speak for everybody else. So financially it's not too, too bad, but outside of that, it just, is like, it's blase. And that's because the fall season for me is very hectic between birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, traveling, you know, all the meetups I'm planning, all that is just like, by the time I get to January, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have nothing left in me. Stick a fork at me. I'm done. You know? <laughs> so I, I could get very sloth. Like I could get very lazy, you know, and just all of those things. I usually don't really get going till about February, if I'm being honest, or like end of January. And so stop and ask yourself, like, where am I with the goals I set for myself? Honestly, what are the goals I set for myself? Because sometimes that happens too. We write the goals down, we put it in a notebook and we put the notebook to the side on our desk or in our prayer closet or whatever. And it's not somewhere where you can see it, you know? And of course, you know, the action plans and all that, you might not be able to put that somewhere where you can see it because it might be very lengthy, but at least the main goals. This is one of the reasons why I love my vision board being, you know, right across from my bed and doing it the way that I did it for this year, where I put 23 things I want to do in 2023. So it gave me a sense of accountability, like, okay, these are things I want to do, which means 
it's an action verb for me. I have to get into action. I have to get into motion and start walking out that faith and then trusting God for some of those things. And some of them don't require a lot of faith. Like I want to have my, more mommy son dates with my son. That doesn't require faith. That just requires me actually like getting up and doing it, you know? <laughs> so that accountability is there every morning I wake up and I can kind of count out of those 23 things, like, what did I do? And so I can be like, oh, wow, I've already accomplished 11 of those things. Oh, wow, now I'm at 12 or 13. So, you know, it kind of keeps the momentum going. But, you know, revisit those goals and then ask yourself, like, where am I with this? And if you are not somewhere where you would like to be, then ask yourself, like, okay. And even if you are where you would like to be, still ask yourself, what should I stop doing? What should I start doing? And what should I continue doing? What are the things right now that are hindering me from accomplishing the goals that I want to accomplish, you know? And if they're hindering me, first of all, you got to be real with yourself. This this exercise is going to require a lot of self-realization and being 100% honest with yourself and not in denial. Here's the thing. You don't have to lie to yourself and you don't have to lie to God. God already knows your heart and your mind. And why, why lie to yourself? Like, you know, you live with yourself. You don't have to lie to yourself. You ain't got to lie, Craig, you know? So just be honest with yourself and admit it. Like, okay, this is a, a shortcoming of mine and that's okay. I'm human. I'm not perfect. But what can I do to stop doing this so that I can see the progression in my life that I want to see? So maybe you have a habit, um, for instance, of coming home and scrolling social media aimlessly for an hour to two hours. You don't need to be on social media that long. And I know it's so crazy because we're like, it's ingrained in us. Like every time I do a fast, I'm actually fasting right now. I've started intermittent fasting just for health purposes and to lose weight. But every month I'm increasing my fast to also include like um, decreasing my social media usage, fasting from spe uh, specific foods I feel led to fast from for that month or whatever. So it's health and spiritual for me. Um, but, you know, needless to say, I always incorporate some sort of a soul fast, which is cutting out, you know, the social media, the TV, anything that's not really that edifying, cutting it out altogether or significantly decreasing it. And it is amazing to me how much getting on social media is second nature. Like literally <laughs> for the first few days, I would wake up and be like, Facebook. And so like, it's just autopilot. Like my fingers are instantly just looking <laughs> for the app and I have to be like, wait a minute. No, we're not doing this, you know? And so it literally comes to the point where I log out of the app. At this point I can fast by just logging out of the app, but there are seasons of my life where I had to take the app off my phone altogether because I was so like attached to it, you know? So maybe that's a habit where you come home and you're just scrolling social media aimlessly. You know, you're watching a little bit too much Netflix and you're not prioritizing the things that you said you want to prioritize. And the thing is, by you doing this, you're saying to yourself, oh, I don't have time to exercise. Do you not have time? Or is it just the fact that your priorities are not aligned right? And I'm not coming at you. Listen, <laughs> I'm not coming at you. But it gives you a chance to stop and say, okay, let me stop doing those kind of things because that's hindering me from reaching the goals that I want to reach. And even if I alter it, maybe I want to scroll social media, but I'll say three days out the week, I'm going to come home and just get straight into a workout. And then my reward will be 30 minutes of looking on Instagram or something, or 15 minutes of looking on Instagram or, you know, something like that. Like maybe you alter it, but I need to stop doing that so that I can accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. So another thing that you might do is, um, you might realize like I have a bad habit of when I'm stressed, I'm eating a little bit too much and not even just eating too much when I'm eating the wrong things. You know, Uber Eats got me on speed dial or whatever. So you might say like, all right, I need to stop doing that and I need to um, do better with that. So, you know, look at what your habits are, look at where you are with your goals and determine like, okay, I need to stop doing this or that, or the third. The, th the second question that you need to ask yourself is what do I need to start doing? So maybe as you look at your habits and your routines and things like that, you might say, I need to start um, exercising more. I need to start meal prepping. I need to start waking up earlier to increase my quiet time with God. I need to start saving more money, like intentionally first thing, like when I get paid tithes and savings and then take it from there. Like what are some things that I need to start doing to see progression in my goals because it does require me to do some things too, you know? Like I gotta help God help me. So another question you wanna ask yourself is what do I need to continue doing? Maybe there are things that you started doing already or you've already been doing and it's working for you. You're seeing progression, you know, you're seeing the fruit. So highlight those things and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna continue doing. So you can literally just like create a, a 
chart on a piece of paper or in your phone and just put stop, stop, start, continue. Like, what am I going to stop doing? What am I going to start doing? And what am I going to continue doing to push me closer to my goals? Also think to yourself, what people, situations, or things may be hindering you from seeing the progress that you want to see? This is another talk that you're going to have to have yourself where you're real with yourself. Sometimes it's not the season for you to be outside like that. Sometimes it's the season for you to be inside. Like, I don't know if y'all heard the song from D1, um, My Happy Place, I think it's called, where he was like, when I have outside money, I stayed in. Facts. Sometimes you need to be in. Sometimes we trying to be outside and your, your bank account is like, sis, where are you going? <laughs> you need to stay in. <laughs> this is a Netflix night. This is when you need to be watching some Netflix, you know, and humble yourself a little bit because you ain't got it. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay. Like be real with yourself. That's where it starts. Be real with yourself so you can be real with your situation, real with God and real with others. You know, what situations might be hindering you from seeing the progress you want to see? Like one thing I want to see is um, that I've been praying to God for um, is just over my love life. And so I have to, like, if you're single like me, for instance, maybe you might look up and say, okay, I'm entertaining a lot of guys that really are not going anywhere. You know, it's a lot of situationships on hand. It's a lot of just like confusion and chaos and unclarity. So maybe you need to get out of those situations. Maybe you need to get rid of those people in your life, you know, and maybe you need to free yourself so you can position yourself to better receive what you're asking God for. You know, um, maybe there's friendship situations, family situations that you find yourself in the middle of, and it might not even be your situation. You might just be in the midst of other people's stuff, other people's, you know, drama and stress. And you might have to say, okay, I need to let go of this. I need to set some boundaries so that I can start walking again in alignment with what God needs me to do. What are things that might be hindering you from seeing the progress you want to see? You know, maybe um, it could be a shopping habit. Maybe, you know, it could just be an expensive item that you have. Maybe you got to sell that item. You know, maybe you're complaining about your finances, but you've got a lot of clothes in your closet with tags on it. You got expensive, you know, gadgets and things in the house that you don't even use. You can sell those things and get money and boom, there you go. There's your increase right there, you know, like, um, so you really have to ask yourself those things. Another question that you want to ask yourself is, um, what are the, like, where, what's the status of the main areas in my life? So I call it the five F's. I believe it's five. It's faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. Yes. The five F's. Cause those pretty much cover every area of your life. So, um, honing on those areas and just again, reassess where am I with my faith? Have I been falling off with my faith walk with God? Do I need to be in my word more? Do I need to increase my prayer life? You know, for me this year, I really wanted to up the ante on my prayer life. Um, you know, I've been doing good with being in the word, but I really want to get back into that space where I'm in my prayer closet for like an hour, you know, and every day it's not going to look like that, but I want it to be a more regular occurrence. So, you know, ask yourself, what is my faith looking like? Do I feel disconnected from God? If that's the case, I need to start doing the things that I know will get me reconnected. Even if I don't feel it right then and there, you know, I need to get back in my word. I need to get back into my prayer closet. I need to get back into serving at church or in a faith-based organization. You know, I need to just tap in more, get around my faith-based friends a little bit more, just things like that. And I, you, it literally might feel like a chore at first. It might feel like, okay, I'm just going through the motions, but you got to get in that space to get rejuvenated, you know, to get realigned with God. Where are you with your family? Where are your family relationships at right now? If you guys need some reconciliation, what are some things that you could do to help foster that? You know, are there some apologies that need to be said? You know, do you need to spend more time with your family? Maybe, maybe you've just been so consumed with work, 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 work and goals and this and that. Maybe it's just a matter of shutting the computer off and y'all just going and like watching a movie together or doing something fun, you know, having a family date. When's the last time you took your family out on a date? You know, like when's the last time that you and your partner and your kids, or if you just got kids or just a partner, whatever, but when's the last time that your family unit all went out and did something together as a family? Maybe it's time to do that because that helps to build the bond, that helps to build the closeness, memories, and it allows you guys to continue to be vulnerable with each other to where you can share like, you know, What's been going on in your life lately? Like, how are things? How are how are you? Like, really, how are you doing? And you can share that with each other. What are some things that I can do to help you, et cetera, et cetera? You know, where are you with your friendships? Again, are you neglecting your friends? 
And I know it's hard, you know, in adulthood, it's very hard. But even again, going back to the last podcast episode, we have to be diligent with our relationships. A lot of people are walking around here lonely, y'all. Don't let smiles and laughter and, you know, cute Instagram and Facebook posts fool you. A lot of people are struggling with loneliness. I'm one of them. I really struggle with loneliness. And so, you know, I've had to, as I've gotten older, make a more intentional effort to keep up communication with my friends. And some of my friends I talk to every day. Like, I got to talk to them every day. I got to at least hear their voice. Like, it's that serious. <laughs> you girl be pressed. Like, where are you at, friend? Where are you at? But a lot of my friends, as long as, we, as long as we touch base a couple of times a week or, you know, throughout the month, and it's like a hearty quality conversation or a visit if we're local, then I'm good with that. So, you know, but invest in your friendships, y'all. Like, your friends, they, they, they're the real MVPs. They're the ones that are there for you when life is life in, when romantic relationships might come to an end, heaven forbid, you know, when you're dealing with family issues. Like, invest in your friendships. Don't treat your friends like they're disposable because they're not. A good friend is better than pocket money. I keep telling y'all that proverb that um, is said in the Caribbean. And so nurture your friendships, just like you would your boo, okay? <laughs> don't ignore your friends just because you got a boo now. Don't act brand new. <laughs> so where are you with your fitness journey? Who child. I feel conviction on that one right there. Okay, so my eating has been good, but my exercising has not been where it should be in Q2. Q1, your girl was getting it. Me and Christian working out every day, just getting it. The Q2, it's been like so many other things going on, but it just goes to show how life shifts too, you know, because in Q1, I have more downtime. In Q2, things elevated, you know, territory elevated, responsibilities elevated. You pray and ask God for increase. He's like, okay. So it just requires shifting and readjusting. And maybe you might not be able to do an hour in the gym you know, four days a week in the season of your life, but maybe you could do 15 minutes of walking on your lunch break. If you, you know, you're working an office job, or if you're like me, um, when I'm out doing Uber Eats, I can be intentional, like take the stairs instead of the elevator, you know, park a little further from the restaurant. So I got to walk further and, you know, just doing little things like that, or even uh, taking, they have this feature in the app where you could take like a coffee break, you know, for a couple of minutes. And so uh, I think up to 30 minutes or something. So I could press that button and then just like go walk around somewhere, just stretch my legs, get the blood flowing, you know, and things like that. And the fifth F is your finances, really honing on that because money, it affects us so much, y'all. A lot of us are complaining that we don't have enough money, but in reality, we have the money. We're just either spending too much or we have the ability to make more money because the things and the tools are right in front of us, but we're just not using it. You know, it reminds me of the story in the Bible with the widow when her sons were going to be sold into slavery because she owed creditors a debt. And she, you know, was instructed to take the jars and in her house and ask neighbors for jars. And, you know, oil would just keep flowing. The more she poured, the more the oil flowed. The more she poured, the more the oil flowed. And it, I was just reminded, even the other day, I was talking with my mom and I was like, you know, I'm trying to think of ways to increase my own income because there's just certain things that I really want to get done a little bit faster. And it's literally just a matter of like, I just need a few extra dollars every month, you know, well, more than a few extra dollars. So, you know, y'all be buying them tapes and them courses. When I put them out. But seriously, though, and my t-shirts, but seriously, though, like I was like, you know, we just need to get some things done and we need the extra money. Um, and the thing is, we have everything right in front of us, the solutions and everything. So I was like, we just got to get started and God will provide and like show us like how to structure in a way to get the extra income and he'll bring the, the helpers along and the people that want to invest and all of that. So I was like, you know, that's just something that we have to do because it's right under our nose. Like we're, we literally have like four or five extra streams of income that we can do right in our house. And so some of them I'm already starting the process. Others, you know, it's going to take a little longer, but think about that. Maybe there's things right in your house that you can be making money from, you know, during the pandemic, people were making money from the house. We can still very much do that. Maybe there's gifts and talents that you have inside of you that you're not quite sure about yet. Ask God to reveal it to you. Like, what are some gifts and talents that are in me that aren't awakened yet? Like, show it to me. Help me to decipher it. Help me to put it into action. You know, all these different things. And um, give me witty ideas. Give me witty, witty inventions and divine ideas and business strategies and stuff to get extra income, you know, and guide my feet along the way. So that way my money can work for me and you get the glory at the end of the day. So again, faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances, hone in on those five F's and reset. What do you need to start, stop, and continue in all of those areas? And how do you plan to get there? So 
again, I just want to remind you that it's good to do this now because we really don't want to get to the end of the year and be like, oh my goodness, like the year just passed me by. Like time is truly of the essence, y'all. It really is. And we want to be good stewards of our time. We want to be good stewards of the gifts and the ideas and stuff that God gives to us. And honestly, some ideas God gives to us um, have, I don't want to say expiration date, but in a way, kind of, yeah, like they have a time limit to when you're going to get the optimal results. I really believe in striking while the iron is hot. And I really believe there are certain ideas that God gives us where it's like, you got to hop on this. And then there are other ideas where it's like, I'm giving this to you, but it's not for like right now. I'm just planting the seed. And you're only going to be able to decipher those things when you pray and ask God to really show you the way in those things. And then by doing this reset, it's going to help you mentally tremendously. It's really going to help you mentally. It's going to help you run your race at your pace to understand this is where God has me right now. It's going to help you lessen the comparison trap. Okay. Cause I know for me, when I start to compare, I'm more likely to get into a depressive episode because I'm looking at what they accomplished and they accomplished and they accomplished and what's going on for them and them and them. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, like I'm still here at this one place. What's going on with me? You know, I need to step it up a notch. And then I'm, and then I, the negative self talk starts coming because that's how the en enemy comes in. And it's like, yeah, you're not doing enough. You, you should have been past this. You should have been accomplished this, that, the third. And then, you know, it's just a whole, it's a whole thing. So, you know, by managing my expectations, by doing the reset and all that, it really helps me to just be real with myself. And resetting also gives me a chance to have a reality check with myself and with what God might be telling me to do in this season as well, so that I also don't increase my chances of anxiety or a depressive episode. Because we set, we plan, but God decides, you know, like they say. And at the end of the day, sometimes God only has for you to do something for a time that's lesser than what you thought. And it you need to give yourself time to grieve that reality, you know, because sometimes we have a plan in mind, a goal in mind. It doesn't work out how we were hoping. And we need that time to grieve that, you know, and to be like, wow, like, God, I know you're good, but I need time to just accept the fact that that particular outcome, how I envisioned it, is not going to happen. However, I trust your will and your plan for my life. And I know that what you have for me is so much better, whatever that looks like. Thy will be done. Like, that's literally how I end all my prayers. I'm like, God, at the end of the day, thy will be done. I'm bringing my request to you, but I want what you want for me, period. Like, that's, that's it. That's it. And so a prime example of this for me currently is with World Team Righteousness, my clothing line, and Single and Save the City. You know, I was really sad about both because with World Team Righteousness, I felt like after March, it just started to get really stagnant. Like it wasn't really giving what it needed to give. And I also wasn't feeling the storefront anymore. But I'm like, I know God told me to do this, but I felt like a major pivot, pivot I'm sorry, was coming. And it was going to go from just being like, you know, t-shirts and simple loungewear to actually being like royalty and righteousness. So you get what I'm saying? Like, for instance, the tagline on our Instagram page is for the ladies repping Christ with style and grace. So it was going to go from what it is now to that embodiment of style and grace in wardrobe and being stuff that you could wear beyond just t-shirts, like actual clothing, like an actual boutique. And so I was like, but God, like, I just wanted to do the t-shirts. Like, this is what you told me. You know, I already am thinking of like mommy and me designs and stuff. And now you want me to go out here and like do a boutique, like with actual skirts and dresses and expand to kids and men's eventually and stuff and all of that, which that's great because I'm a clothes girl. I love clothes. I love shopping. I love putting outfits together. And it's not necessarily like I'm a label junkie. I can go to <clears throat> a cheap store like Rainbow or Walmart, and I could put together outfits that would have head spinning. I could even go into a thrift store with somebody and be like, oh, that's cute. That's cute. You should check. You know, like, it's not even about the label for me. It's about the actual embodiment of style and bringing together someone's style um, in a way that works for them and brings out their essence and their personality. But it's like, for me to do the boutique, that means I have to get certain things in place, like a reseller's permit and just different things like that. So I'm just like, what? Like, you want me to do that? Mm, I'm not feeling that right now. And God is like, you know, I just couldn't shake it. And this is another thing. This is one of the ways in which I know like God speaks to me. And I would even venture to say that he speaks to other people. When you can't shake an unction that you have, like when you have that unction, you feel something in your shanana, you feel something in your spirit and you're like, 
eh, whatever. And you, you know, you try to brush it off, but it just keeps sticking and lingering and sticking and lingering. And you keep seeing like, you know, even confirmation when you go on the internet or when you're talking to family and friends. And for some reason you can't shake this feeling, even if you might have a little worry, even if you might have a little doubt, it's like, you just feel like this is what I should be doing. You know, like that's Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit. Like I'm trying to tell you, you need to go in this direction because there's something there. And the thing is, we might not know what the outcome looks like, but no matter what we know, all things work together for our good. So I was sad about royalty and righteousness, but when God really started like putting that unction in me and it wouldn't leave, I started to grieve the process that, okay, this means I'm going to have to step my game up as an entrepreneur and invest in certain things that I didn't feel like I wanted to invest in in this time, but it's also going to align me with something that I really love to do and that I feel God is leading me to. I was also grieving the status of single and saved in the city because August of this year of 2023 will be a year since I've been doing single and saved in the city. So that's multiple meetups because at one point I was doing two meetups a month and at one month I had four meetups. So it's been a lot of meetups, a lot of events, a lot of things. And I pour so much into it. And I know this is something God told me to do because I even had prophetic words from people that I don't even know about this organization since 2020. And I pour so much into it. It's something that I know I need and needed in the beginning of my single journey. And the one thing that's been a thorn in my side is that a lot of the time when I play in the meetups, the turnout is just not giving. Now, you can watch the vlog, the most recent vlog on my YouTube channel to see what happened with my main meetup that nobody showed up. And I had literally 37 RSVPs and not one showed up. Only two people actually followed up with me and said why they couldn't come. The other 35 just ghost, you know? And so that's never happened before. I at least would have a couple people show up, but it really made me feel like, what is the point of this? Because if I'm going to keep showing up and planning and people are going to, you know, the ladies going to keep saying, I want to show up. I want to be there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that then I need you to show up, you know? And so I started to feel like, well, what am I really doing? Like, do you want me to just stop this all together? And then God started speaking to me and telling me like, you're not meant to just be a local organization. And I never was just a local organization. I've always had women around the world. Currently we have active women in, in that participate in the group in four countries and at least 10 different states and multiple cities. So we're out there, you know, we're global, but you know, I'm in Atlanta. So the meetups are going to primarily be here, but God started telling me like, nah, you're going to travel with this and I'm not going to reveal all the plans, but you go take the meetups to people because the women here that are connected right now might not be able to, you know, really participate like that, or they might not care to really participate like that. You know, whatever the reason, they just not showing up um, the way that I would really prefer and the way that I know God told me and showed me and put in my heart the way that it would eventually be. And I know it'll get there eventually, but it's like, there are women in other locations that are like, Hey, I, let me know, let, let me know when you're in a city near me, I'm going to be there. You know? So it's just like, I need to go out. I need to go out. And so you're going to definitely hear more about that in the future. But I said all that to say, give yourself the chance to reset so that you can grieve what you lost and embrace what you're about to gain. Yes, you might have started something saying it was going to turn out like ABC, one, two, three, and maybe you have to pivot and that pivot is completely different than what you thought. But if you trust God, it's going to work out in your favor. So allow yourself yourself the chance to reset and to start over so that you can get to what God ultimately has for you. Sometimes we really need those moments to pause and process. So here are action items for you to do, and then I'll be out of your hair. For one, start your reset journey. Like I said, we're halfway through the year. If you haven't started, just take this next week or so and just really sit down and flesh out where you are with your life right now. And are you fulfilled? Are you content with that? Are you aligned? If not, what do you need to stop, stop doing? What do you need to start doing? What do you need to continue doing? And your faith, your family, your friends, your finances, and your fitness. Focus on those main areas. This might mean that you also have to fast so that you could cleanse spiritually and physically. You can get realigned with God. This might mean that you need to take a step back from some things. Just put them on pause. Like if you follow royalty and righteousness, I haven't been going hard on that page because I'm in the process of resetting and pivoting. You know, so that might be you. It could also mean journaling your feelings, journaling what God is telling you so that you can move accordingly. Secondly, present your concerns and your worries to God and pray intentional prayers this month. God hears you, sis. Literally, he's hearing you right now. The thoughts in your mind, the groanings that you can't even put into words, Holy Spirit is interceding on our behalf. So bring it to God, bring your concerns to God. 
pray those intentional prayers and watch God work. And he's going to answer you. And as you're fasting and journaling or whatever you decide to do, you'll see it, you know, pray for God to give you visions and dreams. You know, God has really spoken to me in a lot of those ways and um, pray for him to give you confirmation and he will do it. He will do it and jot it down, write it down or leave yourself a voice note so that you don't forget. Lastly, write down your new six month goals and how you'd like to get there. And while you're praying those intentional prayers, God will show you the way. And as you're walking out your faith, God will show you the way. So this will help to restore clarity to your daily activities and to your purpose. So that way you're not just feeling like you're just going through the motions day in and day out. And you're like, what am I really doing? Like, what's the point of all this? You have intention. You know, you're like, this is why I'm doing this. This is why this matters. This is the goal here. You know, so it's going to help to restore that and give you the room to know like this this is what really matters in the season of my life. And again, I'm praying and asking God, and I'm checking with him every step of the way. So that's all that I have, sis. I hope that this pep talk really got you going. I hope that it got your juices flowing and just thinking about some areas in your life that you might need to adjust. Um, take it to God in prayer. Have faith that he's moving on your behalf and, and Holy Spirit's moving on your behalf. And I'm just rooting for you. I can't wait to see and hear all the accomplishments for the rest of 2023 and beyond. I think it's going to be amazing. And I just can't wait to celebrate with you and also share my testimonies as well. And for God to just get the glory. He about to show out, y'all. He about to show out. So again, sis, that's it. Don't forget to like or follow on your platform of choice and give this a rating. It helps to get in front of a lot of new faces and ears. And that's so important. I'll see y'all on the next episode. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of For My Sisters with Dell Podcast. Don't forget to keep the conversation going and use the hashtag For My Sisters Pod on social media so I can see you and show you some love. If there are any topics you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, be sure to email ForMySistersPodcast at gmail.com. I'll see you on the next episode. Love you. Bye.